Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem longest common prefix. We're given a list of strings and we, among all of these strings, we want to return whatever is the longest common prefix. Now what is a prefix? Well, it's just a portion of the string. So for example, this string flight, a prefix is just any portion of the string starting from the beginning. So F is a prefix. FL is a prefix, FLI is a prefix, flight itself, the string itself is a prefix. As long as it starts from the beginning and is continuous, then it's a prefix. And we want to return the longest common prefix among all of these strings. So, you know, what's the intuitive way to tackle this problem? Well, look at the beginning, right? All three of these strings start with an F, right? So F is a common prefix among all of these strings. Let's look at the next character, L. L is uh, the second character in all of the strings. So another prefix that's common among all the strings is FL. Now let's look at the third character. O is the, is the third character in this string. O is the third character in this string. And I is the third character in this string. So unfortunately, FLO is not common to all three of the strings. It's common to these two, but it's not common to this one. So FL is going to be the longest common prefix that we have, so that's what we can return. So the problem really is that simple, but there are a couple edge cases that can trip you up if you are a beginner. So we're going to be focusing on that, especially when we code it up. So basically, we are going to simultaneously iterate through all of the strings that were given. You know, one of the strings could be shorter than the other string. So for example, if we weren't even looking at this string, we can see that uh, these two strings, this string and this string, they both start with flow, right? So flow is a common prefix to both of these two strings. Then if we got to the fifth character, we'd see that, okay, E is the fifth character here. This string does not even have a fifth character, right? So if we get out of bounds out of one of the strings, then we know we can stop, right? And that makes sense, right? Flow would be the longest common prefix among these two strings. So what's going to be the time complexity of this solution? Well, potentially we're going to have to go through every single character of every single string. That would basically be the case if, you know, we had, let's say we had flower and we had it multiple times, right? Then we'd have to potentially iterate through each of those flower uh, strings, right? Because they're common, so we wouldn't stop. And then we have to go through every single character. So the overall time complexity, let's say, is going to be n, where n is the total number of characters that were given. Or if you want to say that n is the average size of the string, uh, and we have m different strings, then you could say this is the time complexity, right? However you want to formulate it. But overall, we're going to just have to iterate through each character in the entire input once. With that said, we're ready to code it up. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize our result. Remember, if uh, let's say we didn't even have a common prefix among any of the strings, right? They all started with a different character. Like we had A, we had B, we had C, right? There's no common prefix among these three characters. So then we just return an empty string because there is no common prefix. So we initialize our result. Then we want to simultaneously iterate through all of the strings, right? So we're going to use a pointer I to indicate what index that we're at in the strings. And we're going to go through, let's say, the through every single character of, let's say, the first string, right? I'm just putting the first string here, uh, strings at index zero. This is just the first string. I'm using that arbitrarily, right? Because it could be possible that this string is not the shortest string in the input, right? In which case, we'd want to stop this for loop earlier than it's actually shown right now. So we'll, rem we'll have to remember to handle that case. I'll handle it uh, slightly differently. Uh, than using a conditional out here. So, okay, so we're iterating through every index. Uh, we want to now iterate through every single string and make sure all of the strings have the exact same character at index i. So let's go through every single string. So for s in the list of strings that we're given, we want to check that every single string at index i is the same. So let's compare this arbitrary string s to the first character of the first string, right? We could pick any of them, but we just want to make sure that they're all the same. So we'll just make sure to uh, choose the same one every time. So we'll go to the first string, right? Strings at index zero is the first string in the input. And then we'll go to index I of that string. So as long as they're equal, 
we're going to continue. If they're not equal, though, which is this case, then we're going to have to return, right? We're going to have to return whatever our result is so far because we know that whatever this prefix is, that's going to be the result because we can't make the longest common prefix any longer. But there's one case that we didn't think about. What if we went out of bounds, right? What if this string S is out of bounds? Because we know this is going to be in bounds because that's our I pointer up above, right? I is always going to be in bounds of the first string because that's what we're iterating through up over here. But this string might go out of bounds. So before we check this condition, we're going to make sure that I is in bounds. So we're going to say that if I is equal to length of S, which means it's out of bounds, right? Then we're gonna also return, right? We're not even gonna check this line of code. If this evaluates to true, we'll immediately return. That's how Python works with the conditionals. If the first one is true, we don't even check the second one. And so that is the entire logic of uh, the for loop. But remember, every time we go through a character, we want to add it to our result. So we can do that uh, pretty easily like this. We can go ahead and add that character that is common among all the strings to our result. And then once we're done with all of that, we can go ahead and return the output result and we'll be good to go. So I'll run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see up above, yes, it works and it is pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you would like. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.